Welcome to the 81 Podcast. It's your host, Asif Ali, and my guest today will be De Anza College coach, Jonathan Marquez, and my San Jose City College brother, Jonathan Marquez. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. How Welcome to... How are we doing today, brother? I'm, I'm doing solid, brother. I'm trying to get this video going. Give me a sec here, my Oh, bad. take your time. Take your time. I already introduced you. <laughs> hey! Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, bro. How you doing? I'm doing solid, man. I'm excited, man. I appreciate you having me on. All right. All right. So I'm going to do the intro again since now I can actually see you for YouTube. Welcome to the A1 Podcast. Your host, Os Feli. I'm joined today by my San Jose City College brother and De Anza College running back, special teams coach, last coordinator, the one and the only Jonathan Marquez. John, tell the viewers again. How you doing today, brother? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. Hey, that's a heck of an intro. I appreciate it. Um, hey, man, it's a pleasure to be on. Um, really excited. Looking forward to... Uh, to you know the next few minutes or hour however long we're gonna be but uh i'm excited to talk some football man oh yeah let's talk some football man shit i haven't seen you in 12 years do you remember me let me ask you that <laughs> man I, I i do i do but uh you know it's it's here and there brother but uh nonetheless it's always good to reconnect and uh yeah you know kind of reminisce uh in those days those moments those good times so 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 i got two stories for you i, I remember one in the weight room you had there there there's some dudes and 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 they were talking some shit to you about saying that you know they're like marquez we can we we, we can guard you and then you're like nah you motherfucker can't do it yeah this motherfucker can try and he can't do it and you point at me this motherfucker right here can try and do it he can't guard me <laughs> and then <I> was... <laughs> hey good times man i got so many memories it's funny man i'm I didn't even, you know, even think about that. But now that you bring it up, I think I actually do remember. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's funny, man. It's funny. It was uh, back in the day. San Jose City was a great time for me, actually. And uh, I got a lot of memories, a lot of great people that I came across, yeah. you know, players, coaches, you know, even teachers and classmates. So San Jose City has got a special place for me, brother. 100%, brother, you know, and then obviously I remember one time we were walking to practice and then some dude, I forgot who it was, they were walking by and then, and then, and then, and then, and then I don't know what, what he said to you, but then you're like, hey, you're not good. And then like, then, then, then the guy's like, why? He's like, he's like, then he's like, then you're like, you're like, you're like, you're not good, bro. You're not good, motherfucker. You're not good. You know, no word, which I won't say on this podcast, but I mean, I pretty much say every word, so it don't matter. <laughs> so I was like. <laughs> hey, man, you know, hey, it's, it's competitive, but. Oh, uh, yeah. But good fun though man you know i love um, you bro yeah man yeah, man no i i mean because you know i mean i mean you were you were you're one of the best tight ends on our team you know i remember you know i mean you're one of the best you know players we had um you know and so i mean coach dub obviously spoke highly of your praises obviously you know this we know this i know this anyone who was there knows this you know, and obviously, I mean, you went on to go play at a four year. So, I mean, but, you know, let's kind of start off with your earlier years, because before I met you, um, or I mean, do you have anything you want you want to add to that before, before we start with, your, with kind of, you know, from the beginning or your, come on in? Um, I mean, I'm sure we're going to get to it. But, uh, yeah, no, Dub, Dub is Dub is the guy. He was the one who kind of like took me under his wing, um, yep. you know, along with, uh, you know, Coach Swanee. Uh, yep. I'm sure, you know, Coach Swanee. Yep. Um, so, yeah, no, Dub is that dude, man. Dub is the is the guru, as they say. Um, got a lot of, you know, good stories and memories with Dub. Um, but nonetheless, he, he was one of the guys who kind of just took me in and, and kind of molded me into the player that, that I became. And, um, you know, he was just, he was just a good coach, man. And, uh, a lot of, a lot of great memories with him as well. But, um, no, nah, I, I, man, I got a, I, I got a special place for coach Dub and coach Swanee in my heart, man, because without them, uh, you know, I don't think I would have, I would have been the player that I was. So, um. Yeah, man, shout out to Coach Dub for sure. And I checked out those that, that podcast with him too, man. That was awesome. Coach yeah. Coach Dub always got stories. Uh, you know, you can never get bored around him. That man is, you know, he could talk for days. Facts. All facts. All facts, man. You know, I mean, the <laughs> biggest thing with me is that obviously, like, like I said, like kind of like now with you, with Manu, with Dub, 12 years, but you know, we we ain't lost a beat. You know what I mean? And kind of right. to your point about dub and the stories and kind of relationships, when I hit him up on IG asking him to come on the show. He remember me like that. He's all yeah. like, he's like, he's like, yeah, what's good, bro? He's like, what's good? I'm like, oh man, shit, coach, man, it's been a minute, but you know, I mean, just so you know, I mean, I mean, your coaching paid off. So just, just in case you you you, you forgot. <laughs> so, it did. That's real rap. That's real yeah. rap. You yeah. know, uh, man, dub dub. I think he's he's touched so many people. Um, you know, in however which way, but he's touched a lot of people. He's helped a lot of people, and I know everybody's got stories on him. I know you right. got stories 
I got stories on them. I know all the guys that that I played with at City got stories on them. And I'm sure all the players that he coached, um, you know, whether it was at Fresno State or San Jose State or Nebraska, all the places he's been, I'm sure he's he's touched and molded a lot of people and, you know, made them better men. Absolutely. You know, I mean, he hasn't he hasn't just created great players, great receivers, great tight ends. He's he's he's, he's made men. You know, out of out of everyone, you know, and we knew that. And I and obviously you checked on that first podcast. One thing he says that he differentiates because people, the new kids, this new generation now, because obviously when we were playing, social media wasn't as big as it is now. You know, there wasn't Instagram, there wasn't Twitter, or you know, there wasn't any of that. Now when kids see him on Instagram, he has close to twenty thousand followers on IG. They think this guy, this guy is just a trainer for NFL elite receivers. But he's all he made it clear. No, he's not, he's not a trainer, he's a coach, you know. And we can obviously attest to that firsthand, you know, from that, you know. So, absolutely. You know, one of the things uh, that I really enjoyed about uh, Coach Dub and his coaching is, um, you know, not not just the way that that he breaks it down, but just his ability to to kind of like correlate Facts. football to life and life to football. And, you know, I can't speak for every player, but I know that at least for me, that kind of just kind of, I don't know, helped me understand really what he was trying to get across a lot better. And it kind of helped me relate to things better. So. Um, he, he's got a, a good ability. Not only does he know football, not only does he know what he's talking about, but he knows how to communicate it and he knows how to like relate to the guys that he's coaching. So I think that goes a long way into being a great coach and also just being a great communicator. Bingo. You know what I mean? I mean, I think you know, communicating, communicating is number one when it comes to coaching, even for me too, when I was coaching my varsity last year for the first time. Obviously, for you, we're going to get into yours, but I'm sure that you've learned and drawn a lot from the experiences with Coach Dub. So, uh, but, we're, but we're, we're going to get to that. So, yeah, no, I totally agree. Coach Dub's a man. So, now let's start with your early years. All right. I mean, kind of where did um, you I think you are South Bay native, right? Are you, are you from the, the South Bay or no? Uh, well, as far as me, when I got out here, yes, uh, I came out to the South Bay and kind of grew up out here. Uh, originally, I, I was born in Venezuela. Okay. Uh, so from Venezuela, uh, I kind of moved to Canada, grew up in Canada, and then come, ended up coming out here like towards, uh, I want to say the end of my eighth grade year. Wow. Um, yeah. So I uh, knew nothing about football at this time, mind you. I was just kind of like living life. Ended up going to a Bellarmine College Prep yep. out here in San Jose. I know a lot of people might be familiar with that school. And that's really where I kind of started playing football. Um. But yeah, just to kind of answer your question, uh, you know, I've been out here since eighth grade, high school times, and uh, I've called this place home. Hundred percent. So yeah, when you were living in Canada, which uh, which which city, if you remember? Uh, Toronto. 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 Okay. T dot. Yes, yeah, I mean, sir. I mean, yeah, I mean, so you, I mean, I mean, you kind of look like a bigger version of Drake. You know what I mean? So I mean, it's good. So yeah, so yeah, we can just you know, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll roll with it. We'll roll with it. I, I yeah, saw Drake. I saw Drake we'll, live two years ago. So I mean, you know, you good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, that's what's up. See from the six. Okay. So yeah, you came in the eighth grade, and then so eighth was your, when you came here. Was that did you immediately start picking up football around eighth grade, or was it high school? No, it was actually in high school. Uh, yeah. Funny story is uh, I used to actually be a swimmer when swimmer. I moved out. Yeah, I used to be a swimmer. I was a pretty good swimmer, to be honest with you. And uh, once I got into Bellarmine, uh, I think one of the main reasons I got into Bellarmine was because I was such a good swimmer, and they had such a great swim team at that time. Mm -hmm. Um. But once I got to Bellarmine, I actually wanted to start playing like football and basketball and baseball because I kind of I felt and I knew that I was an athlete, you know, but nobody really knew about me because I was just a swimmer. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, not many people know or follow swimming like that. But um, I, my first year playing football really like in pads was my sophomore year. Yeah. I was playing corner corner, dude, like I'm way out of position. I was probably the biggest corner in the league. This yeah. is JV football, mind you. Uh, I still had three picks that year, though. I'll never forget that. Hey. Uh, <laughs> but, no, dark uh, side. Dark side, boy. <laughs> hey, you all here. Number 88 can play both sides, bro. Don't matter what size hey. he's on and don't matter how, 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 how outmatched he is. It don't matter. So go ahead. <laughs> I, I be telling people, I'm an athlete, so I just, you know, wherever you need me. I just want to be a team player, put me in a, in, a, in a place and tell me what I need to do and I'll do it, coach. Yeah. You know, that's my attitude. That's my energy. But, um. But yeah, man, my first year playing football was my sophomore year in high school. Mm -hmm. um, played corner, like I said. You know, I was still kind of learning football, learning the rules, trying to get a feel for it. Uh, never had a football season under my belt at all. Um, and then my uh, my junior year, I played there. Um, 
ended up leaving uh, Bellarmine after my junior year, went to Santa Clara, didn't even play football my senior year. Okay. Didn't even play football. And then um, ended up going to San Jose City after I graduated and, you know, went into City. Nobody really knew who I was. None of the coaches knew who I was. You know, a lot of the guys that we were playing with, they played high school football in the area. So they kind of all they kind of all already played against each other or they yeah. knew this guy's from this school or whatnot. Um, but, yeah, I was just out there. But I was hungry, man. And I was just trying to make a name for myself. And, you know, that's kind of where I got going. And. You know, I came across the coaches that we mentioned and, you know, they were able to help me out, sharpen me up. And, you know, every year that I played, uh, I just got better and better. I learned more and more, um, you know, and I just kept falling in love more and more with the game, um, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of like where I, where I was as far as playing football out here in, in this area. That's crazy. You kind of talked about your story about being out for a year, kind of being new to the sport in high school. You know, obviously my story, you probably already heard this multiple times, but I didn't get to play in high school because of my grades. Right. Mm -hmm. So my story was that I try to look around here because I'm from Pleasant East Bay. I try to look around the local JUCOs around here, Chabot, DVC, all these other programs. All the coaches basically asked me, do you have film? I said, no, I never played. And they basically said, OK, you should have luck. You know, best of luck to you. You know what I mean? It right. wasn't until kind of by coincidence, you know, I take my out to San Jose City. I found out there was a team. I found there's a coach Connor there's, and then from a coach Connor, there's a coach dub go to coach C's office, you know, and like I coach C I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm a freshman. Like, you know, what do you, what do you think about me trying? He's all, okay. He's like, he's like, you, are you, you're committed to coming to practice every day. I'm like, yes, sir. But you'd be out here five days a week. Yes, sir. All right. You know, what position are you going out for? I'm like, well, slot or, you know, whatever. Why are you saying, I mean, I'm, I'm at this one, five, nine, one thirty five, uncoordinated as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I'm just like trying to figure this shit out. You know what I mean? But yeah, but. No, I'm, I hear you. I'm like, yeah, you know, you're right. You know, just, hey, I'm out here. I'm just give me a shot. And Bingo. Let's see, let's see Bingo. what happens. Equal opportunity, you know. And so, I'm obviously, my first practice, I will never forget. I remember you were there. Manu, Larry, Dimitri, Welker, you know. And, uh, you know, and who else was it? Hey, uh, all, and all those guys are ballers, too. You know what I mean? I know. Like, big time ballers, you know. All the guys, had, they were ballers in their own way, Um, you know. Maybe some of them might have not been able to go, you know, to that four year that maybe they didn't have that opportunity, but they were ballers, no doubt about it, dude. And that's the crazy thing about San Jose City, man. Everybody be sleeping on City thinking like, oh, it's City or whatever. But, bro, there's a lot of people that, that were really good at football that I played with. And, you know, I'm sure there were players way before my time. And I know that there were players after us that are still coming out of City, you know. So, Big hey, note. there's talent. Hey, if you can play, you can play, man. Like. That's the beautiful thing about football. There's so many teams out there. Um, and if you're a baller, they're going to find you, dude. So you just got to keep – stay committed to the grind, you know, stay hungry, you know, keep keep going after what you want. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, like, that's something that you're going to have to live with. Hey, did I give him my all or, or did I, you know, kind of cat off? And you don't want to be that dude who's catting off saying, dang, like, you know, I'm, I threw that opportunity away. But, um, but yeah, man, don't sleep on, on San Jose City, man. I'm – I coach at De Anza now, but hey, you know, San Jose City is always, like I told you in the beginning, it's always going to have a special place in my heart. Fact. I have a lot of memories there. A lot of a lot of great people have gone through that school, dude. So don't sleep on, on, on those Jags, man. That, that's where I started, man. That was my first ever, you know, you know, so I mean, I, I'm never, you know, I mean, that's kind of your, to your point, those relationships, they, they're, they're eternal, you know. Those bonds are eternal. So I totally agree with you on Ooh. that, bro. So, so kind of let's talk about kind of, see, obviously, you know, you're there. Um, and and it was also I forgot I forgot about Jerome Meadows. You know, obviously that first yeah. year, yeah, he got got to go cow. Remember that? I mean, ooh, Jerome God. was a baller too. Jerome yeah. was a baller too. Um, I remember when he first got out there. Um, uh, I think when he first got out there, I was a sophomore, or it was yeah. like it was like my sophomore. He might have he might have actually like gray shirted that year, like the yeah. first year that he touched down in Cali, because I think he came from like North Carolina or something like that. But um, yeah. but yeah, he was out there making plays from the very get go. The like, jump. Who is this dude? You know what I mean? Yeah. He was up there. I remember it was like, it might have been like spring ball or it was like summer ball, but we, we didn't have any pads yet. And he was out there getting physical with dudes, trying to like, you know, make sure that everybody felt his presence, you know. Yes, uh, but look where he ended up going, you know. So, yeah, Jerome was a baller. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm one time locking me. Asked me if I could wear, if, if 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 he could buy my shorts, and then I asked I, I asked Coach C. Then he's like, Coach C's like, oh, you got an extra for yourself? I like, know, Coach. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, you better tell Jerome to get on then. <laughs> Go <laughs> take the bus home and come back on 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 the same bus. The VTA, it, it's just right. cheap. <laughs> it's like laughing. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then Joe's like, Joe's, Joe's, Joe's like, Coach said that. I'm like, yeah, man. And I'm the, the coach said like, Jerome, man, get you some shorts, man. God damn. <laughs> Hey, man. But, hey, shoot. If anybody can get away with not having their shorts, it'd probably be Jerome. Facts. You know what I mean? Facts. Motherfucker's cold, bro. I mean, he cold. God, he was all, bitch, all over that field for sure. Yeah, man. He didn't he not give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would, he would, he would, he would swarm. That motherfucker would just, he had this thing with the ball. You know what I mean? Like, and just like, you know, he'd just get there. You know what I mean? He, he just. Yeah, I was just going to say the beautiful part, too, is like. If you're if you're a, 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 a true football player, you're trying to compete and you're you know trying to get better. That's the dude you want to go up against too. Like, it's beautiful to have those type of players that you can compete with every day at practice. Yeah, because those are the type of guys that are going to bring out the best in you. Those guys aren't taking plays off. You know, they want to get better. They know who they are. They know where they want to go. So if you if you consider yourself to be elite or you know you should be playing with the top of the top, then. Hey, I want to I want to compete against you every every rep out here, bro, every single day of practice. And that's how you're going to get better in addition to other things, of course. But it's just bringing it to practice every single day, you know. And that's one thing that uh, a lot of guys, especially at our age, when we were playing Juco, they didn't really maybe truly understand the whole concept of that, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, now when you look back or, you know, once you go to that next level, you realize like, hey, this is crucial out here. You know, you're competing Facts. for your spot. Every day is a competition. You know, I love you. You're my brother. You're, you know, we're good friends. But between this time and this time, I'm competing against you, you know. So, right. hey, right. that's how, you, you know, that's what you got to bring to the table, brother. Every, every single every, time. Every, every single time. fucking day, dude. Every single every day. time, bro. Yeah. Every time. So, you know, and, and that's that's perfect segue. Because obviously you said don't sleep on City. Now my coach, so actually, so 2009, so our 2008 season, we both ended up leaving. Manu ended up leaving. You ended up actually transferring. Mono ended up transferring. I ended up going to West Valley, you know, a little anniversary right here. And uh, my coach, Coach Wink, is now the coach over there at City. It's so crazy oh, how it comes full circle. You know what I mean? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, exactly. So Coach Jim Wink. Oh, he's been, been oh, I've been there for at least five years now, I think. Because what happened was West Valley cut the program. I was there in 2009, and then I left because I was, that was my dumb, my sophomore season. West Valley cut the program in 2013. And then Coach, hmm. the coach C left, Connor, I think, yeah, C left in 2015. And then, and then, then coach, then coach Wing, I think, took over around that time. So, okay, yeah. So he's been there for almost like for like a good minute now. So he's been there for like at least four. Yeah, it's I cool, man. That. Yeah, you know, it's just and, and, and actually, sorry. Oh, no, no, just that's crazy. Like life, just you know, like it's like the what do they say? Six degrees of separation, bro. Like, know somebody that knows somebody, and it just all comes back around, you know. Bro, I was telling Lofa to tube that shit, bro. I'm like, I believe we're all separated by six degree separation, especially when you play, cause especially when you play post past post high school, kind of like the circle gets smaller. You know what I mean? Especially and especially in the South Bay, that shit gets so small. Like everybody knows everybody. If you play right. that Bay Conference at De Anza, San Jose City, or fucking West Valley, I don't care where the fuck you play, bro. You know somebody. You know if you play for Photo, you play for wherever. You know what I mean? So yeah, exactly. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. You obviously know that. So now. I leave to go West Valley because Coach Dub is gone to Fresno State. Manu's at going to San Jose State. You went to Tiffin. Am I correct? Sure. Well, yeah, I did go to Tiffin. Uh, but from San Jose City, I actually ended up going to a HBCU oh. out in Virginia. Yeah. Okay. Which, I went which school? To school in Virginia called uh, St. Paul's College. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was an experience, man. Uh, I was. It was and, me. Go and, ahead. And, yeah, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I forgot. There's one other dog we forgot, Strick. He ended up going to Johnson C. Smith after 08. Yeah, or during 08, yeah. Dude, that's my yeah. dude. He's a baller, too. Fucking big ball. Like this, dude. Just like, ah! Yeah, you know he, I mean? he stay in the gym. He stays in the gym. But, uh, yeah. no, nah, Strickland's a good dude. And he's another, uh, you know, uh, Coach Dub uh, prodigy. You know what yes, I mean? Sir. So, um, yeah, man. I think, actually, the year that I left, it was me, Kenny, and Manu that we all yeah. left together. Yeah, we were yeah. like the ones I think that year that 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 ended up getting um, scholarship offers. But uh, but those guys, man, those guys are hard workers. You know what I mean? Those guys are ballers, not just because you know they were born with that type of uh, skill and ability, but they earned it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I've seen those guys grow and develop, just like I grew up and developed. You know, yeah. and I think that's a beautiful part uh, of just kind of going through that process and, and, and kind of going through it together. Um, but yeah, you know, for all those young football players out there, if they're listening, man, just always stick to the grind, keep working, you know, um, Rome wasn't, you know, built overnight, as they say. So 
you know, it's always work in progress, but every single day, it's kind of like a building stone, you know, like yes. we're just con con consistently building, you know, I'm consistently building, just trying to find different ways to continue to strive, trying to get better, trying to get smarter as far as, you know, whatever craft it is that you're working on. In this case, it's football, understanding the game, things of that sort. So yeah, man, just, uh, it was a great experience, but going back to you were saying, I'm sorry, man, I keep, I keep, you know, rambling off and talking oh, it's about good, bro. This is your episode, man. I go on tangents all the time. So the viewers are well, well aware of kind of unformatted shit. So, I mean, you're good. All right. Now, yeah. now, so you're, you're at, what was the name of the school again? At HBC, uh, it was St. Paul, St. Paul's yeah. called. So, uh, we played in the CIAA. It was a division two school, but it was all HB. It was all black college HBCU. I played there one year. And then after that, I ended up transferring to Tiffin. Uh, I had a, a good friend of mine. You might know him. His name is Lebo. Uh, Lebo. Played, yes, yeah. Lebo. Uh, another another beast on the on the field. Um, and he had a younger brother who played at San Jose City. And if I'm not mistaken, he might have coached at San Jose City as well. Um, but Lebo at that time he got recruited from uh, to Tiffin from San Jose City, and uh, he hit me up. And I, you know, we were talking. He was like, "Yeah, I'm going to go to Tiffin." I gave him my my tape, and he 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 connected with uh, one of his coaches out there who actually ended up going to Frisco, uh, Frisco City, San Francisco City, um, and he he watched my tape and he reached out. They offered me a scholarship. That's and that's how I ended up getting to Tiffin. Um, but Tiffin was a great experience. Uh, that was another D two school. They played in the GLIAC conference, which uh, is one of the top D two conferences in the nation. Uh, a lot of a lot of NFL players uh, go to uh, I'm sorry, come out of GLIAC um, for a D2 school and a D2 conference. So that was a unique experience within itself, man. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's how I ended up getting to Tiffin. Um, and Lebo was the main connect right there. So shout out to Lebo, man, because had I not, you know, crossed paths with Lebo at that time, um, you know, I don't know. I might, I might have either stayed at the Pauls or might have not even been playing football. I don't know, man. But yeah. Lebo came through and I'm happy he did, man, because when I went to Tiffin, I got man, I was able to play the way I wanted to play. Uh, I fit the system. We were throwing the ball. So I was loving it, man. It was, it was a great break for me, honestly. 100%. You know what I mean? Because obviously when you go from a, from a JUCO to a four-year, you know, and, I mean, for me, I, I wasn't able to get it for you. Kind of to your point, I didn't get the opportunity. I could have walked on a D3 like Menlo or something like that, but the opportunities were like, you know, or I could, I, I, I decided to, to kind of hedge my bet, roll the dice, and try for the Sabercats in 2010. And, you know, rest is history. So, I mean, end of the day, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I'm just like this. <laughs> hey, hey, deservingly so, bro. Deservingly yeah. so. Appreciate you, you bro. Gotta, you got to do. Exactly. You know, and so, but obviously, you know, for you and, like, my, my other team is West Valley who went to HBCUs. You know, they, they, I was talking to my other, one of my other teammates, Hashim, was on uh, two weeks ago. You know, the, 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 the schemes mm -hmm. at, at HBCUs are a little different in the sense that it's either it's usually one first or they want a dual threat QB and they basically want to mm -hmm. have a, an offense, which will be a, which will, which will fit a dynamic kind of, you know, quarterback and like, and like, and like a dyna dyna dynamic running scheme, you know, and obviously kind of for your, to your point, when you go from, you, when you go from that, from San Jose city, where you're actually you're going to be used a lot more, you know, in a, in, in a pass heavy offense, to now going to fucking, you know, a, a, a dynamic run-based scheme as a tight end, you know, your opportunities are limited, you know? And so obviously, I, I, go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, I agree. I agree. You're yeah. And, and pretty much. And so obviously in that now, so when you talk about when you go to D2, now, now it's a scheme that fits better. Now you finally can, you know, be in a scheme that you'll be used more. So that's pretty much what I gather from that. And, and you know what? Um, I would say, you know, I think that's very crucial right there on what we're talking about. If you're a young player, uh, whether you're playing high school, or junior college, um, you want to you want to make sure that you know, like what scheme the school is running that you're going to. Right. You know, you want to be sure that you're going to be a good fit. Um, I would never advise you to go to a school just to go to a school, especially if your dreams are to like be playing every Saturday. You know what I mean? And potentially go to the league. Um, you want to go somewhere where you know you're going to get exposure, somewhere where you right. know like your style of play is going to is going to fit. and um, you know, I feel like a, a lot of times maybe kids end up going somewhere just because, you know, oh, well, this is probably the best school that offered me. So I just want to go there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I know that sounds nice. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to you want to go somewhere that makes sense. You right. know, you want to go somewhere where you're going to prosper in a sense, you know. 100%. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because one of our previous, on the fifth episode, Lofo, he was actually talking about some some kid, he got D1A offer, D1, or D1AA, and most people just take the D1AA offer. 
you know, but they wouldn't even think of twice about it because, oh, right, you know, it's like you would just grab it, you know, but really to your point, you really have to think about kind of how you're going to be used, how much playing time you're going to get, because that's really what's going to define your success. Like to your, to your previous point, if you can ball, they'll find you. It doesn't matter where you go, you know? Right. So just so obviously all the kids out there listening, you know, just take that to heart, you know? So, absolutely. absolutely. All right. So now it's so now you're at Tiffin. All right. Now, now you're in a scheme that fits better. Talk to me about that. Your first year, were you sitting out or kind of were you playing? Uh, no, my, yeah, my first year that I went over there, uh, I was sitting out, but I was, you know, working every week. I was with the guys practicing every day, uh, you know, getting familiar with the offense, getting familiar with the scheme, um, you know, getting familiar with, with the coaches, what they wanted, how we ran things, uh, special teams as well. Um, you know, when I was at Tiffin, I, I was able to play on all the special teams in addition to being a starter. Um, but I love special teams and just Best trying to find game, out. Best baby. Best team's yeah. game, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> A big time, big time. That's where you win games. But um, yeah, man. Uh, I took that that year to just kind of you know get familiar with the whole the whole school, the whole the system, the whole program, the coaches, everything. And then the following year, I was I had my opportunity to play. It was my last year to play college football. Um, and I made the most out of it. My senior year, uh, I was a starter, like I mentioned. Played a little bit tight end. Played a little bit of slot. Uh, we threw the ball uh, when we could. Um, we didn't throw the ball like the way we wanted to every game. Cause you know, our team wasn't, you know, I would say the best in that, in that league, but you know, every, it, you know, every game is different. You got a you know, game plan, you got a scheme. Hey, are we running this week? Are we throwing this week? But for the most part, we threw the ball as much as we could. And it was way better than any of the scenarios that I used to be in. Um, but I just love the opportunity that I had a chance to go out there and showcase myself. You know, I had an opportunity to play the game that I loved the game that, uh, you know, I've worked so hard to try to get to this point, you know, I wanted to play college football. I wanted to get a scholarship and just to have that opportunity, man, I was, I was happy, you know, and I don't have any regrets. Um, I, I feel like my experience was unique in its own way. Um, obviously there were maybe things that I wish I could have done differently, but I mean, who doesn't, but you know, that's part of life. And, right. um, you know, but overall, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, play with a bunch of other ballers over there as well. You know, a lot of people may not know about Tiffin, um, but there's players out there from all over the country. Um, there were also some Juco cats from out here that went out there as well. Play with some guys from San Mateo, Frisco City, uh, that ended up going to Tiffin. You know, one of my best friends is actually the starting quarterback at San Mateo. Uh, and, you know, if you know the history of San Mateo, they ball out every year. So, you know, he's It'd a be a 65 to zero. <laughs> Go ahead. That's, hey, you know, uh, the boys <laughs> over there, but yeah, they be, they be, they be getting it in. But, um, but yeah, man, Tiffin was, was, was a great experience all the way around from just, uh, the people that I played with, um, you know, just being able to play college football at a, you know, D2 NCAA level, uh, going up against, you know, NFL talent on every week. Right. Uh, I think every, I think every, every school in that division had a guys that either went to the league or could have played in the league easy. Right. You know, so it wasn't there's was no slouches out there, but just the whole experience, man, just the whole journey, you know, every just being able to play every Saturday and going through the weeks and game planning and practicing. And, you know, you got to love it if you love football, Facts. you know, Facts. and I love it and I miss it. You know, I think every every football player that doesn't play football anymore, for sure. I know they miss the game, dude. Like when I'm out there coaching on Saturdays. Man, I'd be like, I wish I could play right now. I see the guys getting, you know, I'm getting juiced. Sometimes I'm more juiced. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. I get more, more more hyped up than my players. You know, I'd be like, man, give me a jersey. I want to come out here and play. Yeah. I may not be in the same shape. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. I, may, I may not be moving as quick as I used to, but geez, like, man, you feel it. You know, that that those juices start flowing through your body and, uh, you know, your, your adrenaline and you're just amped up, man. Yes, you sir. Know? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, man, I miss it. But you, um, going back to Tiffin, yeah, man, it was just a great experience, brother. And and I was able to learn a lot. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stories, man. I, don't, I could be here for hours, honestly. But yeah, Go man, ahead, it was just, shit. it's your episode. <laughs> overall, it was it was it was a phenomenal experience for me. Um, you know, just just being able to go up against the people I went up with and, and being able to play with the players that I played with and being able to train with the people that I trained with and just being able to pick up, you know different things from different people, you know, whether it's coaches, you know, how do they go about, you know, game planning and, you know, how are they putting us in positions to win? You know, I've always felt like 
I've been a student of the game. So I've always paid like special attention to those like finer things or smaller details, you know, uh, cause I do feel like if you are a smarter player in it, you know, regardless of how good you are, you're, you're going to be better because right. you're going to know how to, you know, basically attack or approach certain scenarios or, you know, you'll have the, those like quick, like instincts as to like, Hey, if this is thrown your way. You know, what's my counter or like, what am I going to do? Or how do I read this? Is this zone, man, you know, being able to study, being able to recognize coverages, all those things, man. Um, so I was able to learn a lot during those years, during during my time there. Um, and, you know, just very thankful for that. 100%. You know, obviously, and to your point kind of about, you know, suiting up and trying to play again. I remember when I was when I was playing coaching last year, we were doing the cones drills and I was and I was just beating up my kids, you know, to get to kind of, you know, get them, get them, get them used to like contact the line, you know, get them used to like kind of trying to break a press or break, you know, get getting their inside release, their outside release, you know, get their hands ready. I just kept jamming them and I'm like, my coach would tell me this shit. Like, you know, if the man beats you by one step, you're fucking beat. And then I just kept, and I'm like, and I was like, you all, y'all want me to line up? <laughs> Yeah, and you know what I mean? It, it rattled them. But, you know, that's kind of the point, kind of what you're saying about getting more juiced and more hyped. You know what I'm saying? Because, like you said, anyone who's played the game at the level we played, you know, it's it's, it's just in you. You know what I mean? It's just in you. You can't – You and, and, and you know, it's funny, actually, when Dub was on uh, on Tuesday last week last, oh, and with, with Dave, Darius Prince, you know, one of one of the other guys who coached with AF, um, he DP is now coaching high school ball out there in Pittsburgh, and he and he was all like, "Hey yo, like there's one kid who I I forgot. It's like we're like we're like highly recruited five star recruit, and and, and and DP's like, "Hey coach, let me let me let me scoot up just for a few plays. Let me go up against him, and he was just burning this kid every single play going deep, bro." <laughs> And then I mean, it, and essentially, it, it it just teaches them the lesson. You know what I mean? Like right. regardless of of regardless of like how cold you think you may be, always keep working because there's gonna be someone better than you. You know? For sure. So, yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, man. And it's funny too. No matter how good you are, man, you should always be striving to get exactly. even. You know, uh, there's a saying out there, and a lot a lot of us coaches use it. You know, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Facts. Right. Um, and I know I have a lot of my guys that I train. Uh, I tell them the same thing. Hey, man, like it's good to see that you guys are getting better and you guys are progressing. But don't ever, you know, get to a point where you're you feel comfortable. You know. Right. You should never be able to like let up like that in that way. Uh, you should always just continue to work, always try to get better. You know, even if you are at the top or even if you feel like you're at the top, man, you got to keep going because, you know, you don't know how long you're going to be at the top for. Right. Um, I had a wise man, a wise man once told me uh, the wolf at the bottom of the hill is always hungrier than the wolf at the top of the hill. So, you know, that's that's a that's a mindset they should always have, regardless of which wolf you are, yeah. you know. So that's that's the that's the energy. That's the mindset um, that, you know, a lot a lot of football players I know have. But the ones that really that are really getting to that next level, that's what they have all the time, you know, right. and they just got to stay hungry and committed, man. hundred percent. You know, the more committed you are, the better it will be. So, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. So kind of talk to me about kind of what happens after Tiffin. Right. I mean, did you get any looks at the league? Do you have a pro day combine? Talk to me about that. So, it, you know, it's funny because. Uh, at the D2 that we were at, which was Tiffin, uh, we didn't have, we were supposed to have a, a pro day, but it was actually a pro day for the whole uh, league. It was supposed to be like the GLIAC uh, pro day. Uh, and they were hosting it at Grand Valley State, which was up in Michigan. Uh, and uh, for whatever reason, when that time came, they, they told us that Ohio schools and Indiana schools, which were also part of that uh, league, they weren't allowed. It was only um, Michigan schools. And we didn't have a pro day at our school. And it's funny because our coach, after that year, he actually ended up leaving and he went to, I believe, Georgia Tech. He took like the special teams coordinator job at uh, Georgia Tech. So, you know, he wanted to go D1 and he never really, unfortunately, connect us with any type of pro days. So I had to come back to California and I just had to get on, on my hustle try to connect with people. Uh, we had a couple of CFL like um, pro day opportunities. Uh, I was with the Sabercats a little bit. Sabercats was kind of cool. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there that I knew a lot of guys that played D1. Yeah. I was trying over there with the Sabercats, but you know, that never went through at the end of the day. Um, so at that point, man, I was just like, Hey, I got to pay bills. I got a kid, you know, um, 
you know, if the opportunities aren't there or at least not there right now, I got to, you know, find a way to, to operate and, you know, keep pushing forward. Uh, so I ended up just kind of working, but, uh, you know, football was always my, my, you know, my itch. I've always been like, damn, like, I, I can't just leave the game. You know, I want to play, but if I can't play, like how else can I stay involved? Right. And, uh, you know, I just felt like I could help out as far as coaching. I felt like I could help the youth. I felt like, um, you know, I kind of wanted to give back to like the kids, the way that like the coaches gave to us when I was coming up. So like going back to like Coach Dub and Coach Swanee, you know what I mean? Like those guys played uh, at a high level, whether it was D1 or NFL, right? But they gave back to us, you know what I mean? They 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 guided us, they molded us, they gave us the, the golden nuggets, so to speak, as to like what to do, what not to do, how to approach things, you know what I mean? Things of that sort. Um, and I just felt like I learned a lot from that. And, uh, you know, if I can't play ball no more, the only way I could stay involved around the game was to coach. And, uh, you know, if I'm going to be coaching, uh, I want to be able to help people. And I want to help these youngsters. You know, I want to help them try to get to, to the next level. I want to help them accomplish their their goals, you know. And a lot of these guys, they they, they have that, you know, dream to, to play D1, to play, you know, D2. It, it doesn't matter, I tell them, you know, Playing at the next level is a very unique experience, and especially when you could get your school paid for, you know. Um, but yeah, so I ended up getting into coaching, man, and I, I love it. I'm coaching right now. Been at Deanza now for three years. Uh, next year would be my fourth year at Deanza. Uh, I've also, uh, you know, I'm coaching and training guys on the side right now. I used to do that prior to Deanza as well. So I'm just trying to find ways, man, to stick around. You know, uh, impact the game and impact the youth. However, I can, you know, I want to, you know, give them the knowledge that was given to me and uh, give them the guidance that was given to me. And uh, I feel like that's crucial, man, especially a lot of a lot of these kids, man, they, you know, they're not all living in, you know, two two parent households necessarily, right. you right. know, so, uh, you know, every every one of these youngsters, man, they all have their own story. They all have their own walk in life uh, and not everybody's going through the same thing at the same time. So. Um, you know, just being able to help all those players, whether it is a two parent household or a single parent household. I mean, we got kids that just come out here from, you know, Florida or wherever, and they're by themselves, you know. Right. So just being able to help these guys out, you know, and it's not easy. It's not easy. Being a junior college football player is not easy. Definitely you, know, isn't. <laughs> you know that. I know that. Anybody who's played Juco ball, they know that. Um, so, you know, it's it's a grind, bro. It's a grind. It's a journey. Um, but you know, the, the, the strong will survive, you know, and as long as you're hungry and, and you have that, that goal, that dream, that ambition, that's, what's going to keep you alive, brother. You know, you're going to have ups and downs, but you know, you just got to be able to, you know, uh, weather the storm and, and, and come out on top. Ultimately, you know, there's a saying, you know, never give up, never give up. It's funny, you know, ever since I was a little kid, my, my dad used to show me this picture of, uh, of like a pelican that just swallowed like a, a frog or something. And that frog was like halfway in or halfway out of his mouth. But the saying was like, never give up. You know, it's like, I always think back to that frog, you know, that almost could have died being, you know, eaten, eaten by the pelican, but you know, he got out. It may not be the best analogy, but Hey, for whatever reason, it, it stuck to me. You know what I mean? And it's never give up and never give up. Oh, I'm a fighter, dude. I'm, you know, I put my heart on the table and I just go, you're going to have to kill me. You feel me? Fast, but fast. <laughs> you're going to kill me, bro. Um, Motherfuckers, you or me. <laughs> it's going to oh, be me. <laughs> it, it, you or me. You know what I mean? Just how you were telling me about those stories that you remembered about me at City and how those guys were, you know, saying this or that. It's like, hey, you know, at the end of the day, we can always find out. You know what I mean? Bingo. But facts. when we find out, it's going to be you or me, brother. And if you get me, you're going to know that it was a long day for you. You know what I mean? You had to earn that, you know, and you know, more times than not, they can't match that, yeah. you know, or they're not really about it. Like you are, if you're, if you're a real one, at least, and the real ones know that, you know, so. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so let's so talk to me about kind of what you're doing before you got to Deanza. You mentioned that, you know, cause how did you break into Deanza and kind of what were you doing before you got in Deanza? What was the time between Tiffin and Deanza? I mean, cause you said some of the stuff you're doing prior to then you're still doing now. So kind of talk to me about that. Yeah, well, at first I was, uh, I, had, I had no connection at Deanza. At first, I, I just wanted to start training guys. Yeah. Um, so I 
came back into into the area and I connected with some of the guys that I knew that I played ball with or that they had like younger relatives or they had family members. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm just, you know, trying to find kids to train. And I started finding kids to train. And obviously I had a lot of connections out here in the area from my playing days. And, uh, and you know, just who, know, you know, who's who in, in, in these circles. Like you just said, in the South Bay, if you played ball, everybody knows you, right? You know, everybody knows somebody. Um, but um, but eventually I uh, came across a good friend of mine. Uh, this is high school friend, actually. And his uh, his name was uh, Nate Garnica, um, who actually coached at De Anza um at the time um fortunately he passed away so you know rest in peace to coach garnica uh he was a rest good peace. dude and, um you know he was the one who kind of connected me to deanza uh he connected me to the head coach coach santos uh you know shout out to coach santos he he gave me an opportunity um you know he heard my story he bought into what i was bringing to the table um and you know i'm very grateful to him for that and i don't think he he regrets it you know uh but you know uh, he's a good guy and he's helped me out. But um, yeah, Coach Garnica was the one who connected me with Coach Santos. Uh, he put in a good word for me and the rest was history. I, you know, I've been at, at, at De Anza ever since. And, uh, you know, I enjoy it over there, man. We got, a, we got a great program over there. We got great coaches over there. Um, we got a great group of kids every year. I mean, the last three years I've been there, you know, we got kids, like I mentioned, from all over. But these guys are great kids, you know, uh, great football players, great students. Um, and these boys, uh, you know, they want to play at the next level. And we've been doing a great job of getting them out. You know, we want to make sure that these guys are handling their business in the classroom. Uh, but we also want to help them get to the next level. Um, so, you know, that's why Deanza right now um, is probably one of the best programs in the South Bay. Easy, in my opinion. We have great coaches that played at the next level. You know, they've had their own experiences. They have their own stories. And it's always great to be able to relate to players. You know, as I touched uh, touched on earlier when we were talking about Coach Dub, one of the good things about Dub is that he's able to relate to his players. Um, so we have a group of guys that have the ability to do that. And I feel like our players really, uh, they benefit from that. You know, they, they're able to understand the game better. They're able to relate to us. We're able to relate to them. We're able to, you know, explain, you know, specific situations, game situations. Um, and I think our players, they get it, you know what I mean? And they buy in and we got great camaraderie. Uh, we got a great ambiance over there, great culture. Um, it's a great program, dude. And um, I'm just, I'm super fortunate to have been able to join that coaching staff, to be able to be a part of that family. And uh, we got, you know, a lot of big things coming, man. I can't wait till, you know, this whole COVID thing goes goes through and uh, we're able to, you know, get back out there on the field, dude. I'm, I'm itching. I'm, I'm so hungry to get back out there. We, we, we got guys that, you know, are training right now, you know, just waiting for the moment. And, and that's key, you know, uh, the opportunity is going to come, but are you going to be ready for that opportunity? So the guys that are getting it in right now, when that opportunity comes, they're going to benefit from it. And the guys that are probably, you know, not as hungry or probably don't have that same urgency, you know, it might, it might, it might cost them, you know, but, but either way, man, we're just trying to get back out there, man. We're trying to get out there and compete, trying to get out there and play football and get back in the mix of things. And I think 2018 was one of those, one of your best seasons, right? Uh, 20, uh, 2019, 2019. Yes, sir. Uh, we ended up winning our, our conference championship. Uh, we also ended up winning our bowl game. We ended up going 10 and one that year. Uh, hell of a season, hell of a group of guys. Uh, so many memories, man. Um, every week was every week was a story, you know. Every week was a journey, um, but it was so much fun, man. So much fun. It's so funny because <laughs> I think like every game that year, uh, this is bad, but in a way, it was kind of like a blessing. Maybe I don't know. But we started every game with a penalty. It was crazy. <laughs> wow. And we would talk about it. We would talk about it like we're not gonna start the game with a penalty. In some way, somehow. Some way, somehow, we'd get a penalty, whether it's a kickoff or whether, you know, it'd be a, a, on the kick return or whether it'd be on, on the first play on offense. Something would just go 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 wrong. Something would just happen. And uh, we would always just be able to overcome it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And a lot of those games, we came from behind, too. So it wow. kind of just showed the, the character of that team, you know. Uh, but these guys were fighters, dude. Every game was a battle. Uh, every game, like I said, had its own story, you know but it was a dramatic ending and it was just a great journey, dude. 
and we're going to get back there again. You know, um, this year we couldn't play. The year before we went six and four. Um, you know, we had a lot of those, uh, a lot of the guys from that championship team leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were kind of younger, you know, um, but, you know, we're, we're going to get back there. We had a great class, a uh, great class coming in this year. So now it's going to be next year's class, but we're looking forward to it, dude. I- I'm so, so ready. <laughs> so ready. hundred percent. Kind of, kind of, and, and to talk to me kind of what, what, what do you tell the guys who came in the un- incoming guys for this year and kind of what message do you relate? Do you, re- you really, re- I kind of relate to them to keep them motivated, you know, for next year. The, the newer guys or the yeah. guys that, that are, that oh, supposed- are you, oh, the, the returning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell me, tell me for, for both because returning guys, this is, this is their, this is their opportunity, right? You know, so talking about absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we always just tell them like, look, next year is still another year. You know, it's, you're not losing a year this year because we're not playing. Uh, and the NCAA knows that, you know, so um, they already know the type of culture that we have as far as the guys have that have already been there. They already know the culture that we have. They know what our coaching staff is bringing to the table, what the program is bringing to the table. Uh, they were already part of a championship team. Um, so th- they already know what's going on. The guys that were coming in this year, um, we- well, we just sell them on the opportunity. You know what I mean? Because it's true. Uh, we have a we have a, a winning team. We have a great culture academically. We're set. Diaz is number one in transfers and graduates and all that stuff. Every year we're getting more and more guys out to the D1, D2 level. Every year our scholarship count is going up. You know, so uh, you know we 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 basically tell them the uh, journey that the coaching staff has been on and the players that have been there, been there since I started, which was like three years ago for now going into four years. Um, but yeah, we just, we show them the progress. We, we tell them we all, ultimately our job is to try to get you out and we feel like we can help you to get there. We can, we feel like we can help you accomplish your goal. Um, you know, if you follow this regimen, if you follow the plan, you know, eventually your chances of getting there are, are very likely. Um, but I mean, it, it, we, we have our, our coaching staff that, you know, we stay in constant communication with these guys, you know, they're like family to us, um, you know, they're like our kids, you know, yeah. um, so we're always, in, in, you know, either hollering at them, like, hey, how's the fam, or hey, what are you up to, hey, how's school going, hey, you've been working out, all this type of stuff, and they, they when we have meetings too, you know, we meet with these guys, we've been meeting like weekly, Right now we're in the holiday times. So we give them the time off, but uh, we we're meeting weekly, and uh, I know our guys are getting it in. Um, we're giving these guys workouts. Um, some of the guys, you know, they might be going to like a camp or getting some training with, uh, you know, either their own trainers or or with us. So, I mean, we have different ways and different tools that we use to kind of just keep them engaged, you know, keep them locked in, keep them involved, keep them, you know, excited, keeping them motivated, all of those things. And that's awesome. You know what I mean? Cause it's cool. You can find workarounds to kind of work with them in these kind of tough times. Right. Because, you know, if you, if you're able to sell them on the mission, sell them on the journey, sell them on, on, on the values of the program, obviously, you know, like you said, numbers don't lie, you know, number one transfers, number one, and, you know, kind of success rate. Then, I mean, it's, it makes it a little bit easier, you know, cause you have that name to kind Absolutely. of build off of. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, we're not, we're not, um, you know, like a San Francisco city or a San Mateo, at least not yet, but right. that's right. basically what, what, what we want to do as far as like being able to build up the program and getting guys out, you know, we want to make sure that Deans is a school that's known as far as junior colleges are concerned, right. as far as the South concerned, or as far as the Bay area is concerned, you know, and I feel like a, a lot of, a lot of schools know who we are. A lot of teams know who we are. A lot of players know who we are, um, you know, and we just kind of let our actions, you know, do the talking. Yeah, it's funny because 09, my West Valley season, that's actually when DeAnza won the conference. And then also Kevin, Kevin Vi, you know, he's QB, obviously, you know, he, he won the MVP that year and he went to Delta State and he played in Europe. I was like, and he, and I'll, I'll never forget, we played, we played the DeAnza. I was like, oh God, no, please. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, I mean, kind of like, you know, and to your point, kind of what you guys did 2018, 2019, you just carry that momentum. You know what I mean? I, I, I saw, I saw a better team, a better version of that 09 team kind of, you know, with, with your team. So kudos for that. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, that was a heck of a team we had, man. A lot of special players. We had a lot of guys that that got out, um, but we had a lot of men, just kind of unique players, man, that were just able to make plays when we needed them to. Uh, guys that were able to step up when we needed them to. So um, we were very fortunate as as coaches to you know 
have those type of guys. Um, you know, we did a great job recruiting them, but they did a great job of, you know, ultimately making the plays and coming through when, when they needed the most. 100%. No, exactly. No, obviously, you know, you, we as coaches, you know, now we, we set the example for the players. You know, I mean, now the players obviously have to take on themselves and it's great when they can respond. When you see that, it tells you, you know, your coaching's working, you know, because they're buying yeah. it. You know, and, and you know what, man? And there's no better feeling than that. You know, I know right. for me, uh, I'm a special teams coordinator, you know, and I, I really take the time to break down the film and kind of see like who we're going up against, what type of tendencies they have you know, what type of weaknesses they may have. And um, I love kind of just coming up with game plans for that. Right. And when your players are, you know, in there studying, they're watching the film, they're taking in the coaching, and they're applying what you're telling them to do. And then ultimately it trans translates over to game day and they're making the plays based off of what you guys were working on, what the coaching points were. Dude, that's so satisfying. It's, it's so gratifying, honestly. It's like a, it's like a, a proud papa moment. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, really, because like, like you said, like they're your kids, you know, figuratively and literally, you know. Yeah, pop, and and when they come through and they execute and they buy in, man, it's a beautiful feeling. Hundred percent. You know, special teams is my my forte. I don't know if you can read that. Let me see if you can read yeah, that. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love yeah. it. I yes, love sir. it. Dude. I, I, I made my it. made my whole career off special teams, bro. So. Bro, it's money. It's yeah. money. Yeah. People sleep on it. You know yeah. what I mean? People really sleep on it. I mean, like coaching and like from a coaching perspective and from a player perspective, because, you know, coaches, but certain coaches may be like, oh, well, you know, it's not that one third, as people always say, they may not put that much weight into that, but, but it really <laughs> is, but it really is, you it know, is. like crazy, like a pump block or a kick return to My the God. house, Bingo. like that can change the whole momentum of the game, especially yeah. depending on, you know, what part of the game that takes place, but. Or, like, or a punt, or or feel, or 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 or, or kick that 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 pins the other team deep because then you control field position. Right. It's nope. it's it's the little things. It's the Very, little things. You know what yep. I mean. Mm -hmm. And that and that's that that's what could make or break a game. Believe it or not, dude. Yeah. You know. Um, I know you know that. Um. But those listening, a hey, special teams is crucial. So and the and from the player perspective, I always encourage players. Hey, get on special teams. I'm always trying to get like my best players on special teams. You know what I mean? And yep. from a player perspective, it's like, dude, that's more, that's more film for you. That's more, that's more highlight opportunities for you. You know what I mean? Right. I, that's what I told my coach. I'm coach. I'm, I'll play on punt. I'll play on kickoff, uh, kick return, punt return, field goal. I don't care. You that's know what right. I mean? I'm just trying to be on the field. If I could play defense too, I'm out there, yeah. you know, but, um, but hey, if you're a young player coming up or you're a Juco player, man, get on special teams. You know, a lot of guys, you know, they'll get picked out from special teams. You know, coaches be watching film. You never know, man. So, you know, I, I just feel like that's a great opportunity to just show the type of athlete that you are, the type of playmaker that you are. So a lot of guys get caught up like, oh, I'm too good to play special teams or whatever. Superstar mentality. Superstar yeah, mentality. Man. You want to avoid that. that. You will, <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and coaches at the next level, they're, they're just look, they're looking for guys who want to play. You Bingo. know what I mean? It doesn't matter what it is that you ask them to do. You know what I mean? If they tell you to jump, the answer should be how high. You know, right. but, hey, coach, I'm, I just want to be. I want to. I want to play, and I want to win. You know what I mean? I want to compete. Like, tell me what to do. I'm ready. I'll run through a brick wall right now if you want me to. You know what I mean? That's the type of mindset and energy that these coaches are looking for because they want guys that are gonna buy in to the to the program. Guys that are gonna, you know, ultimately do what they need to do when asked to do so. You know. Yeah. No, not that uh, superstar mindset, not that hero mindset where like, hey, I'm supposed to be doing this, but, you know, I'm going to just break my assignment and go over here trying to make a play when it's like, no, dude, trust your teammate. You do what you need to do, you know, but um, but that's part of just learning the game and and, you know, being a, becoming a smarter player um, and also just understanding like, hey, this is football, dude. Like if I just do my role. I'm going to be all right. And ultimately it takes everybody to do their role for the play to pan out, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, you know, hundred percent, you know, and kind of to your point, and you can attest to this firsthand as a player, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you allude to this, when you go up to the next level, you talk about the coach was looking for the next level. Mm -hmm. You may be the dog of dogs at whatever level, whatever level you came from. Once you get to that next level, everyone's evened out brother. So you Everybody. better be willing to take whatever role you can get. So kind of, you know, 
So absolutely, and that's what we were talking about earlier too on 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 the competing. Yeah. From, on a day to day basis, because 100%. like everybody's a dog. Yeah. Right. Everybody wants to play. Everybody's competing for for playing snaps. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's then. And ultimately, once you get to that level, man, the guys that are gonna play and the guys that are gonna have success are the guys that have that mindset. Fact. You know, what I mean? if you don't have that mindset, you don't have that energy, you don't have that hunger. Uh, if you're there, eventually you're gonna fade away, bro, because you got to be consistent with it. You know, it's got to be an everyday thing. It's got to be like, this is my life type yes. of thing, you know? Bingo. You know, it's a lifestyle, man. Coach Dub was, Coach Dub was talking about this on, on last week. He's like, when he was coaching at Tulane, he said that he said that the coach, kids over there from day one, are they have that mindset because they're coached like that, to just be willing to do whatever the coach says and not question it. Whereas over, you know, Cali, you know, sometimes you see spoiled dudes, like, you know, right. And you can't test this, you know, so that's, go ahead. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. I mean, I think you're going to have, you know, you're going to have those type of players, maybe like all parts of the country really. But no, I mean, once you get to those higher levels, man, um, I mean, these guys are recruiting a specific type of not just players, but individuals as well. Right. I mean, at least, at least the, the good coaches, you know what right. I mean? They have to understand that, hey, I understand this guy's a monster on the field, but is this is this is this guy somebody that I can trust that I can bring in here and he's going to be able to handle his business in the way that we expect him to handle it? Absolutely. You know what I mean? And I'm not just talking about being on the football field and making plays. I'm talking about being here on time, being at meetings, you know, what I mean, being a being a role model, being a you know class citizen, you know what I mean? being respectful amongst the, you know, the, 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 the faculty and the students and, you know, the presidents of the school and the boosters and all this stuff. Right. So, um, a lot of, a lot of things, another thing, sorry, that, um, I meant to say was that when you get to the, to the next level, a lot of, a lot of the, the youth, the younger players, especially like Juco players and high school players, what they don't understand is like, once you get to that level, man, it, it's, it becomes a business. You know what I mean? Because yes, sir. these coaches, they're they're this is their living you know so if you're not following through or you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing best believe that they're gonna go find somebody else yeah. you know what i mean because there's no way that they're gonna let you mess up their career there's no way that they're gonna let you uh be the reason why you can't you know pay the bills or you can't put food on the table or now your wife is leaving you or whatever the case may be because right. now you have a job you right. know so you, you know, when you get there, you have to understand, hey, I'm a scholarship player. These guys brought me in for a reason. You know what I mean? And my job here is to basically go to school, graduate, but at the same time, be a football player, be responsible, show up, be on time, be a leader or be a role model and make plays, bro. You got to make plays. That's what you're here for. You're a football player. Nobody gave you a scholarship to ride, to ride the bench, especially if you're coming from Juco. Yeah. Right. For a Juco player that gets a, a scholarship, they're expecting you to be a starter. Right. Bingo. They're not expecting you to be a backup, dude. So, um, you know, that's another thing in a, in a, in a, in a, a different aspect that we like to help our, our, our players with, you know, just helping them understand like, hey, guys, like at the next level, there, there isn't that much leeway. There isn't that much room for error. Like you guys have to button up. You know what I mean? We have to start approaching this as like professionals. We have to start approaching this like in a business mindset you know it's not it's not high school anymore you know they say this isn't you know semi-pro football this isn't pop warner you know what i mean if you're gonna go to the next level you know you better start acting like it dude you better start playing like it you know so all those things have to come together uh first and foremost for you to even have the opportunity to earn that scholarship and then once you earn it and once you get there now you got to keep it now you got to keep your starting role right now you got to be out there competing every single day right so all these things man they they matter but the beauty the beautiful thing is, is if you're that football player that 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 is hungry for it and, and you have the ambition to be great you're not going to have to have people reminding you of this because you're just going to do it off top you straight know? straight you're going to do it off top, just off off the love of the game man you yes, know sir. you you work so hard your whole life to i mean i mean just to get a a college football scholarship is a is an honor and an accomplishment within itself right um and once you get there obviously you want to prove that you earned it and you belong but i mean it's a lot of work and sacrifice bro and you you know that um you know everybody that that's been on this show they all have their own journey they all have their own walk but 
best believe that there was a lot of sacrifice. There was a lot of, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, a lot of blood that was involved behind their journey. And uh, ultimately that's, that's what needs to happen. And, and that's what makes the journey fun and exciting. You know, I feel like a lot of, a lot of the youth, a lot of the young kids nowadays, they just want like instant gratification. Facts. You know what I mean? They want to be like, Oh, like I just want a scholarship coach. Well, you're going to have to earn it, buddy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're not just getting, they're not just out here handing out scholarships like that. Like you're going to have to work for it. And I'm not just talking about going to practice. I'm not just talking about just busting ass in practice. I'm talking about what are you doing outside of practice? You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing in the film room? What are you doing in the weight room? What are you doing on the track? What are you doing with the cones and all these other things? Like you have to have be an all around football player. It's a 24 hour job in a sense. You know what I mean? Just because you're not on the field between four and six, doesn't mean that you know you're not working on football you're not working on yourself you know um so you know these are the type of things that i feel like um the youth needs to understand and, and i feel like uh, the older generation like myself and like you and stuff you know we got to be able to pass this this type of knowledge down to to the youth you know what i mean just to kind of help them uh sharpen up and just button up and mold themselves into the, the players that they want to become you know Hundred percent, you know, and that's kind of a whole point of you know having you know talking about our journey, talking about stories, because then they can kind of appreciate kind of what hard work results in, you know, and that you know obviously sacrifice, hard work, you know, there ain't there ain't there ain't there ain't no what's the word? There ain't there ain't no fruit. There there ain't no um, reward without um, without risk. I don't know. Fuck it, I can't think something of like that. that. No, no, I I, I get I get what you're saying, but it, ultimately that's true, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the end, of the day, you got to pay the price. Nothing yeah. comes free. Life. Nothing yeah. comes free. Straight. You know, straight up. It's like uh, I was telling my players, too, it's like, um, have you ever, I was asking, you know, have you ever uh, taken a test and aced it, right? But most likely when, when you ace that test, you studied for that test, right? right. When I'm coming into that test, I already know I'm going to kill this test. I, I, I put in the time. I studied my ass off. I had to study notes. I did this, all that, and the other. So I know that when I take this test, I'm going to get nothing but an A. Right. Yeah. Same thing on the football field. Right. When when you're applying yourself and you're working and you're preparing yourself, you're studying your opponent, you're reading the scouting report, you're finding ways to get the advantage, you're finding ways to have that that competitive edge. Guess what? When you're lining up on game day, that guy better have done what you did, if not more. Otherwise, he's in for a long day. Why? Right. You know I me? Mean? Yep. Yep. hundred percent. You know, hundred percent, you know, because. I remember that you know when 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 I, when I would take days off, I don't care if it was arena, JUCO, whatever, and or like or like or like the coaches see me taking plays off, right? I, it's, they they call me out for being soft, <laughs> or, or 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 they say every rep that you sit, someone else is taking that to get better. Mm-hmm. Every play you take off, someone else is using that play to make up to make a play, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And and if you're anybody, if you are that football guy, that that should make you feel sick. <laughs> right it's like yeah. it's like it's like when you miss a practice or something or or you're like oh i didn't go to the gym today or whatever right if you if if you really care that should bother you you yeah. know what i mean because if that's how you carry yourself and that's who who you showcase yourself to be or that's how you identify yourself then it should matter to you you know so yeah man it, that's what but let's see that's the thing though you know especially as coaches like and a lot of the young players, they may not recognize this because, you know, they haven't they haven't had that experience yet. But you can tell who the like, I don't want to say who the real ones are, but you can tell like who it matters to and who it doesn't matter to. You Back. know what I mean? Back. You'll have play, you'll have players that may not be like the most skilled players, but you can tell like, damn, it matters to them. Right. These guys are here every day. They're busting their ass. They're on time for every meeting. You know, they're, they're here after practice, getting some extra work in or whatever, or maybe here before practice, getting the work in either or. Right. And then you have the guys that, you know, maybe they have the skill set, but you know, they feel like, Hey, it's just God given. And all I got to do is just show up and, you know, go through the motions. And at the end of the day, I'm still going to come through. I mean, that's very, 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 very minimal. You know what I mean? Um, there may be a couple of guys that may be able to get away with that, but ultimately you're not going to get away with that. And in life, you're not going to get away with that really. You know what I mean? Like I said, everything's about hard work and preparation, bro. You know, right. and attitude, yeah. you know, hard work, preparation and attitude. I mean, I think that if you apply that to not just football, but you Anything. Know, life, yeah. I mean, 
you're you're going to be uh, better off to say the least. Yes, sir. No, I mean the way I see, it, I, I I have three, I have two E's and an A: energy, effort, attitude. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know, need that man. That's 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 like the that's the secret ingredient, I guess you can say, to like as far as just just being able to uh, be ready for the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. As far, being ready for the moment, I think those are the secret ingredients: the preparation, the you know, the energy and the attitude. Facts. Totally yes, sir. Agree. Well, you know, let's let's get off football for a second. I know, actually, no. Let, let let's talk a little more fun about football. You're a Raiders fan, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So Josh Jacobs yeah. going to Pro Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Going to and, Pro- and Waller, your position, he's going to Pro Bowl. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead. And you know, and you know, Waller, Waller, Waller's my dude. That's he's a baller dude. Oh yeah. my gosh, man. The way the way we 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 discovered that man was, I couldn't believe it. I mean, his story is very unique. Um. Wow, it's a, I'm, I'm sure you you know his story with his uh, addiction problem and how he almost passed away. And right. you know, for him to be able to do what he's doing now, that's man, that's incredible. Uh, but yeah, man, it was it was good to see those guys make it to the Pro Bowl. Uh, just you know, disappointed in the way the season panned out. You know, them boys started off six and three, and then now they're like seven and seven. So they've yeah. been more like, powerful. And they and you know, they 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 uh they got lucky with the Jets. They, they got, got lucky. real lucky with that game, man. <laughs> they got lucky with the Jets for sure. Um, could have been zero and five actually. Yeah. So, I mean, their defense, their defense needs to get. Uh, you know, they got to fix it. They got to get a new defensive coordinator. They got to go out and get some, you know, playmakers. Don't get me wrong. They have like the Abrams and the Nick Kawakowskis, and you'll have like a Max Crosby. But you got to get more veterans out there. You got to get a, a real defensive coordinator in there. So. This this offseason, I'm expecting John Gruden to uh, utilize all of his draft picks on defense and uh, free agency on defense. You know, I feel like the offense can definitely do do work. I like what he's done. Obviously, like you just mentioned, uh, Josh Jacobs and Waller, those are the key guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, Derek Carr's, ha- you know, he's having a great season. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he got hurt last week. Um, but the offense, the offense been doing well, man. I don't think uh, that's the problem. I just think that maybe John Gruden focused maybe a little bit too much on just offense and uh, not 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 so well with the defense, man. Defense has been a, a disappointment. I'm actually – and I love John Gruden. I think John Gruden is a good coach. I feel like uh, John Gruden is uh, the perfect fit for the Raiders. Um, I've always thought, actually, that the Raiders probably weren't going to be good again until John Gruden came back, and, wow, he came back, right? I never no. really thought that would happen, but – um, I'm just disappointed at like how he fell asleep on the defense, you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. So I'm just hoping that, you know, they can make it happen this off season and get right. And uh, next year has got to be uh playoffs or, or something's got to happen. <laughs> it's make or break, bro. It's make or break. $1 billion for that new stadium. And then obviously now COVID they're going to lift the restrictions. So people can start going to the games. If they're not going already. I mean, you got it. You got to do better. You cannot start that well. And then just, you know, to fizzle yeah. out. You know? and that's two in a row, actually, that, you know, they start off well and then towards the second half of the season, they kind of fall off. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, man, um, I'm, I'm expecting next year to be a different story, though. Uh, I mean, I think John Gruden needs it. I think the Raiders need it. They got players, man. They just uh, we just got to get past this COVID thing, man. I think with the COVID, uh, you know, week to week missing players and, uh, you know, the injuries, and then on top of, you know, maybe having the the holes that they have on defense ultimately came back to bite them. But I think next year they're they're going to be in the playoff mix for sure. 100%, you know. But, I mean, I'm glad that I'm glad that you're putting the blame at John Gruden because in my previous episodes, I'm like, when is this man going to take the blame? Because, obviously, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he say when he signed the contract for $100 million for 10 years that if he doesn't win a Super Bowl during his tenure, he'll return every penny of that contract? Didn't he say something like that? Man. If he did, that's a bold statement. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, <laughs> you're like, are, I, bro, are you sure about that, John? Are you sure you want to put that out there, bro? But um, not. Nah, I don't know, man. He's like, he. This is year three. I know. I know he wants to finish with a winning season. Yeah. I don't know if that's gonna happen though, because yeah. the defense is not looking good. Uh, hopefully, they get a couple of players back. Um, but right now they're seven and seven. They got two games left. I think they play like the Dolphins and they play uh the Broncos on week 17. So we'll see what they can do. Um, but nonetheless, man, he's got to get to work on our defense uh, come day one of offseason. 
Hundred percent, yeah. And I mean, it'll be interesting to see. You know, I mean, obviously, if if they can use the draft draft picks to the to to full advantage, it'll be all right. You know, so. And they yeah. haven't been a bad draft, to be honest. The last two years, I've been a fan of what uh, John Gruden and Mike Mayock have been able to do. Um, but I just feel like this year, this upcoming year, is going to be a crucial draft. They got to find ways to revamp that defense. Facts, facts, hundred percent. Well, so what? Else, what? What about your basketball team? I, I, I don't think I ever asked you that. Ah oh, man, I'm a Raptors fan, bro. You already. Uh, like... Oh yeah, oh yeah, I saw that. Damn. Yeah. yeah see, yeah, yeah. So, so see, I'm a Lakers fan, so I mean, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, 15 minutes, 14 minutes, we're gonna have a ring ceremony down there, so it's, it's all right, you know. Hey, I heard, I, I, I heard. Matter of fact, uh, I heard that the Lakers said they weren't even going, they weren't even going to, uh, uh, basically do the banner celebration or the ring celebration until they had fans in the stands. Uh, I mean, I want to know. I mean, I, all, all I know is that the Lakers official uh, IG, they posted ring night, and that's in 14 minutes. So, I mean, uh, ring night, so, you know. Hey, that's going to be a good game, too. They got they got the Clippers, right? Oh, yeah. No, we got the Clippers, man. We, we fit Battle, the of the Battle of LA. Battle of LA, man. Shit, we, we, we better bust their ass, bro, because every fucking – last year, all the Clippers fans were talking, they messed about, oh, yeah, we got Kua, we got PG, we got all these – we got these dogs. I'm like, bro, you couldn't even make it past the second round. I mean – not only did you not make it past that round, you blew a three-one lead. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, gee, like, come on now. I'm gonna tell you this, man. I'm 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 upset about these LA teams taking my 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 Toronto players, man. Oh, so no, 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 no. You, you gotta be upset with the Clippers because all that we took was Gasol. Gasol is done, but they yeah. took Abaka and they took Kawhi from y'all. They did. They yeah. did. Well, they took they took Kawhi for sure, and I think I think it was Kawhi who took. Ibaka. Yeah. Yeah. But um but actually actually Toronto though, I mean, they got a unique team. I, I still feel like they have a lot of good players with like Kyle Lowry. Uh, you know, he's a vet, he's a dog. Uh Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, uh Norman Powell. Yep. You know, I don't know if you checked out the Raptors first round draft pick, which I think might have been the steal of the draft. Uh, Malachi Flynn out of San Diego State. Ooh. He's got like a Steph Curry type of game. I kid you not, a lot of people. And I'm not saying he's going to be Steph Curry. I'm just saying the fact that he can handle the ball, he right. can finish at the rim, right. and he's got a sweet three pointer. You know what I mean? So I feel like that man's going to be a problem in the NBA. So keep an out, keep an eye out on him for sure. Uh, and plus, the Raptors, they have a, they're they're a team that actually they play team ball. You know I what agree. I mean? I agree. They don't, they don't rely on just like a superstar player. So that's the beauty about them because they're able to just keep that ball moving. You never know who, which night, you know, who's going to go off. So I think that's what makes them dangerous on top of the fact that they're always, well, at least like the last three to four years, they've been, uh, you know, top five uh, defensively, you know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, you know, defense wins championships, not just on, on in football, but in basketball as well. You know what I mean? You got locked down D. Uh, that means that you're you're getting stops, you're getting steals. That leads to transition buckets, which leads to easy buckets. Um, you know what I mean? And if, if you're a good rebounding team, you know, that's part of playing defense. I don't care what anybody says. Facts. Um, you know, you got to be able to finish off the defensive uh, end of the court by getting that rebound, right? So you can get – you could, they can miss the shots, but if they keep getting that ball back, then you're not really getting stops the way that you want to. But – um, you know, I think the Raptors feed off of that, man. They they have a deep team. They have a deep bench. Uh, they play defense. They're scrappy. Uh, you know, so they're just gonna bring it to you every night. We'll see. We'll see what they do, man. We'll see how they pan out over there in the East. It's gonna be tough because uh, you know, the Nets are out there. The Celtics are out there. The Heat are out there. Milwaukee just got Giannis back. Yeah, I could go on and on, bro. <laughs> I know, no, but you know what? I mean, I mean, the overall point to your point. Here's what I think. Had Kawhi not left last year, y'all probably would have repeated. Back to back, bro. Because I, because easily, because easily, if you look at that team, kind of to your point about the team ball and kind of the pieces and the matchups, Toronto, how they did last year in playoffs, imagine if Kawhi was on that team, you know what I mean? To play Boston or play you know what I mean? And just like, you know, it would it wouldn't even yeah, I mean y'all, y'all, y'all would have repeated, you know? I you know what? I've been I've been saying that since the moment that Kawhi left. I felt like wow. Kawhi, you just blew the opportunity to go back to back, bro. That's facts. Like he, had, he had he had the team. Yeah. You had the team. Yeah. You just you just beat the Golden State Warriors. I don't care what anybody you talk about the injuries. No, that's all fine and dandy. At the end of the day, you guys did the what nobody expected you to do. Kawhi came over here for one year and did the, the impossible. Yeah. 
you know, and uh, and then he ended up leaving. And then you look at the L.A. team that he went to. I mean, they were they were nice. They had some some names. But the when, when you're talking about team chemistry, when you're talking about just understanding where your players are going to be, what they're going to do, where they like things, passes or just positioning on the court, things of that sort. I felt like the Raptors had that down pack. You know what I mean? And then once Kawhi went out there, he thought it might have been just as easy. He thought that it might have just been able to translate over. But as you can see, it didn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think he realized that, you know, after they got out in the playoffs, that he might have made a mistake. He'll never admit it. He'll never admit <laughs> He'll it. never admit it. Exactly. He'll never admit it, but best believe that, uh, that he's thinking about it. And, you know, it's funny. Did you hear what he said today? Talking no. about uh, how... Uh, he see, he's in like his uh, last year of his contract. So he said, if I'm healthy, I wouldn't sign the player option. I'm not saying that I'm leaving, but I'm not saying that I'm staying. <laughs> you know how you know how he is, you know, hella mellow, hella chill, but he'll never like, he'll be candid. He'll be candid to say the least, right. you know. Um, but that's, you know, you never know. What, is he going to leave after this year? So you went to L.A. for two years. You left Toronto to, you know, have the opportunity to go back to back and, you know, now you're over here in LA trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> <laughs> man. You know, it's crazy, man. Who who's crazy. your team, bro? Lakers, bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you did say that. Well, okay. Yeah. The Lakers are uh, they're looking uh mighty powerful. I'll yes, give sir. You that. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mighty powerful. Hey, 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 hey. You remember I'm not sure you remember spring ball one practice. I thought DB's coach was like was like, Oh yeah, he's like like the Lakers, man. Yeah, y'all thought I was gonna win. Yeah, then we had to step off that bandwagon because you know they had to, they lost and so and then and then I think Ramez came out and then Ramez and then and then and then, Ramez, and then coach was like Ramez, you about to be our DB's machine, boy. You're gonna be worse than Kobe Bond in game six. I'm like, oh man. I was like, Yes, sir. <laughs> Bro, that's when I know just to shit my son. <laughs> just like oh my, oh my god, dude. <laughs> That's funny, dude. That's funny. And I love, I love, I love how you have these memories, dog. Right. You know, Bruh. it's funny because I, hey, I, 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 I talk to uh, like Kenny Strickland a lot. Like he's yeah. one of my dudes. Strick, yeah, yeah, he's one of my dudes too. We always and we always reminisce a lot. And um, I don't know, you remember Jasper? Jasper, bro, Jasper Briggs. <laughs> hey, so Jasper Rose, Jasper Rose, good dude. Um, yeah, man, we always be like every time we connect. We always just be reminiscing on city days, man. Always be telling stories. Always talk about dub, the dub stories. I I, I remember one time, dude. <laughs> oh, this shit was funny. Uh, we were at practice, and yeah. uh, so the tight ends and the receivers were working together. Mm -hmm. We're doing some drills, and you know, if there's one thing Coach Dub hates is when cats be dropping the ball, right? Yeah. So we were. I don't know. Um, we're probably halfway through the practice. We're doing some like individual work, but the tight ends are with the receivers, like I mentioned. And uh, Coach Dub had enough. Guys weren't having a good day. Cats were dropping the ball left and right. And uh, he huddled us all up together and he was just going off on us, right? And <laughs> the thing, hey, one thing about Dub though is that he'll be real. You know what I mean? I like, yeah, it. he's a guy, you know, he'll, he'll hit you with the hee hee ha ha's. You know what I mean? And he'll hit you with the analogies and the metaphors, and that's all fine and dandy. But when he when he gets serious, he'll tell you the truth to your face. Yeah. And that day, dude, he was going off on us. And I just remember that everybody was just hella like, oh, shit, like, Dub is really pissed off right now. You know what I mean? Like, he's not really – like, he's not the, the same old happy-go-lucky Doug, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, he was just like, you motherfuckers suck. You know what I mean? You guys think you guys come out here thinking that you know you're this or you're that. Well, guess what? You suck. You're trash, and you're just sorry, right? And he was just saying like he was pointing that out to the guys, right? And we we're just kind of like, oh man, like damn, you know what I mean? But the reason he did that was just to let us know like, hey, it doesn't matter like how well you played last week. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Like, you know, you're not that guy yet. You know what yeah, I mean? You have yet. to like bring it every day. You know yeah. what I mean? You have to be out here doing your due diligence. You have to be out here doing things properly. Don't just come out here like, oh, I'm just going to walk through or I'm just going to go through the motions. Like that's not going to pan out. And you can see, and you know, as you know, as a, as a football player and as a, as a football coach, you know, what you do throughout the week is what's going to translate over on game day. Bingo. 100%. You know what I mean? 
So if, if we're out here, uh, you know, looking sloppy, no energy, dropping balls left and right, you know, what do you think is going to happen on game day, bro? It may not be a good day, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just remember like that's, that might have not been like the best story. Obviously I got hella stories on dub, but I just remember like, I remember no, that, that day, that I, day, like it was like, Oh shit. Like that's so true. Like we're really, I, I'm really not that dude. You know what I mean? Cause if I was that dude, uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation, fellas. Like if, if any of us in this group was really that guy, or if we believe we were that group that, you know, we thought we were, um, you know, coach dub wouldn't be having this conversation with us. You know what I mean? We wouldn't, we wouldn't be having this moment of truth, you know? Um, but it was beneficial. You need those. Sometimes you need, you need coaches that are going to tell you shit to your face. Hey, right now you stink, bro. You know what I mean? And you got to do this and you got to do that to get better. And the sooner you realize that and the, and the sooner you, you get to it, the better off you're going to be. But, uh, you know, if you continue going down this path, bro, you might as well just not play football no more. You know what I mean? Because you're just wasting your time. You know, uh, Coach Dub used to have a great analogy one time. He was like, I used to, he used to tell us, I remember when when I when I was in school and, uh, you know, so-and-so, he was a geek, right? He was, you know, we would consider him a loser or whatnot. But now that dude who we always saw in the library or he was always, you know, doing the after hours with the teacher, now that guy's a CEO. Now he owns his own business, right? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that he owns his own business and now he's a boss, right? So same thing if you're a football player, right? If you're really going to be that guy and if you really have dreams to make it to the league, right, you better have the type of work ethic or you better be doing the things that where people are going to be like, whoa, I'm not surprised that guy made it to the league, right? Because every time I saw that man, that man was either in the weight room or that man was on the track or that man was, you know, out here at the break of dawn, or at sunset, or whatever the case may be, getting in that extra work, right? Getting in that grind, right? Getting in the lab, as they say, you know? So, I mean, all those things, bro, they they all they all add up. They all translate over, um, you know? And, and that's why I say that that, that journey, that, that that process is is a beautiful thing. And and, and once you get that, uh, that taste of satisfaction of, you know, accomplishing something that, that you've worked so hard for, it just makes everything so much more worth it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. All, all my viewers. <laughs> so, yes, yes, sir. All the time. time. You know what I'm saying? And, and kind of kind of to your point, and I think we'll close out with this, kind of Coach Dub's the philosophy, you know what I mean? And that story that you said, that you said that it wasn't your best story, I think it was your best story because when DP was on, and we're talking now Coach Dub coaching the AAF, this is, these are professionals. Mm-hmm. All right. right. These are professional DP playing the NFL. All right. Now, and, and obviously kind of to your point, like, you know, like, you know, we all think we're these dogs. Like we talk about Larry, Dimitri, you know, the strict and you know, they are, you know, in my opinion, in your opinion, I mean, I still feel like they're dogs, you know, right. But if, if you recall correctly, who would be at our spring ball doing the ladder? James Jones. Mm-hmm. Who was right behind him? John Boussard. Oh. You know what I mean? Did he say no. a word? Did he say a word? You tell me right now. Did he say a word to anyone? Nope. No. Nope. What did he do? He just did the yeah. ladder, ran his routes, mm-hmm. worked on his hands, worked on his that's feet. What we, that's what we did on, on those showtime workouts. You know what I mean? Those showtime workouts were money. That's 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 exactly what we're what we're talking about too, as far as just kind of doing the 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 extra thing, going above and beyond, you know what I mean? Trying to trying to build uh to towards who you want to be. Yeah. You know, and you know, I was fortunate to 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 be able to join those guys. You know, dub allowed me to come into those workouts, you know, that was kind of like invite only, you yeah. know what I mean? So when, when, when dub allowed me to go in there, bro, I, I took it, uh, you know, upon myself, like, dude, like you got to maximize this. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I can't fuck this off. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way that I can miss any of these practices. Like if dub says we're here on this day, bro, there were times where sometimes it was like maybe two or, or, or three dudes there, not, not because there weren't more that were invited. Cause a lot of times there were way more than that. But it got to a point where I was going to some of the Showtime trainings and it was just me and like two other guys or me and one other guy, like me and Lakati or me and somebody else. Yeah. You know, but it didn't matter though. I don't care. Like, even if I was the only one there, I just knew to myself, like, I'm not going to let Dub down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if, if Dub allowed me to join this group, 
I'm there with James Jones and Brizard and, and the state guys. And then, you know, some of the other guys that were coming, like whether it was a Cal dude or a dude right. from, you know, Stanford or whatever. Cause you know, Dub is, you know, he's well connected and he's got connections everywhere and guys are always trying to come in and, and link up with him. But man, that to me was like an honor. You know what I mean? Just to be able to work with those guys. Me too. And, and I, and, and I took that and I took that to heart, bro. Facts, took it to facts. heart. Yeah. And I took a lot of pride in that, bro. I, I you know, I was turning down, you know, uh, what people would consider fun times. Right. Uh, but to me, I didn't give a damn, bro. Like, I felt like this was my opportunity. And ultimately I'm happy that I, I, I sacrificed the things that I sacrificed to be there because that's what made me the player that I was. And I, I, I can never be more thankful. You know, that's why, man, I got a, I got a place for Dub. And you know, Dub, he told me straight up one time, he was like, man, I'll be honest with you, Boozer. I, I didn't think you were going to make it. You know how you be talking. I, I, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to make it, Boozer. You know, I thought you were going to come like one or two weeks in and, and you were going to tap out. And I was like, nah, Dub, I couldn't do that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, this means too much to me, you know? And and after maybe, I remember like the first year of working with him, dude, bro, my game changed. My game changed. <laughs> my speed changed. My explosion changed. Everything. My rock changed. Everything changed. Yeah. And you know, I always took pride in having like good hands. Um. I, I, I always like that was like my forte, um, just being able to like be secure with my hands. So once uh, Dub was able to help me like just improve all my other aspects of my game, I was like, whoa, I'm a different dude. I'm a yep. different player, you know. And I was just able to from that point on, I was just able to continue to build. I was just trying to get better and better, you know what I mean. And I always, I always use like everything that I learned from that man. Uh, and then just try to find ways to continue to build off of it. And man, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy I did. <laughs> I'm yeah. so happy that I, that, that, I mean, think about it. Think about who Dub is today, bro. You know what I mean? Like hella people want to be with Dub, right? He's all over Twitter, uh, you know, he's on Facebook or whatever, IG, all that. Right. But how many people are probably hitting him up? And I'm not just talking about players. I'm talking about like coaches, right? Like, coaches from all other colleges that want to like pick his brain and like, you know, uh, you know, asking questions and this, that, and the other. And, you know, for him to have been at San Jose city during the time that we were at San Jose city, like what are the chances? What are the chances, right? bro? Like San Jose city, like San Jose city. Like if I went to San Jose city today, my experience at San Jose city, it would probably be a complete night and day compared to like what it what was we had absolutely right? absolutely and that's and, and that's why i feel so so fortunate to have like the swannies and the dubs because and those, the shearers those, and the shearers don't forget the shearers oh yeah swanee yeah. that's that's called swanee yeah, swanee, yeah, yeah, yeah i got you yeah shout out, shout out to swanee for sure curtis shearer that's that's his name but i hope he doesn't get mad at that but uh <laughs> yeah but swanee swanee was my dude and dub was my dude but we were fortunate oh shout out to coach lamont too oh you know, lamont, yeah lamont, Lamont was my tight end coach my freshman year, so shout out to Coach Lamont too. Um, but yeah, man, all those guys, man, uh, they all they all had a key uh, part to just um, you know me being molded into the player that that I became. And I'm sure it's the same thing for you, and I'm sure it's the same thing for all the other guys that were a part of that, those Showtime workouts and were a part of even on the team, bro. Just being able to have those coach because those are real coaches, bro. You know what I mean? Those guys they love football. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a player, like, that's what I tell my players. I'm like, bro, how can I want this shit more than you? That shit don't make no sense. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that shit makes no sense, right? Like, that shit sound backwards. You feel me? Like, happen, bro, because it's true. It's, it's true. true. Nowadays, you, man. Go ahead. It, the, my, it's like, it's like, riddle me this, Batman. You know what I mean? Like, how, why is it that I'm here? I'm the junior college coach, right? I'm not, I'm not out here getting paid $100,000. Nowhere near that. Not even half of that. Not even a quarter of that, right? Right. I'm out here getting paid a stipend check, but I don't care. I'm not here for the money. I'm here because I want to coach and I want to help back, the youth, back. right? I give back. But at the same time, it's like, bro, how is it that I'm here at every meeting? How is it that I'm here at every practice, right? I, there's no there's no coaching scholarship waiting for me on the table, bro, right? Yeah. But you in the other end, you're, you're at a time of your life where you can play football and get a scholarship and get your school paid for and that could potentially change your life, right? So why is it that I'm here every day? I'm not missing. I'm not late. I have no excuses. But y'all over here every other day telling me 
excuses. Y'all, as 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 Coach Zub used to say, you guys got more excuses than the Dr. Seuss book. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you and, know, like, come yeah. on, man. You know, like, so, you know, it's just being able for these guys to, to understand, like, hey, h- how much does this matter to you? Bingo. You know what I mean? Like, how, how much do you care about this, bro? Like, how much, how badly do you want this? Yeah. And don't tell me about it. Show me. Right. You know what I mean? Like, don't talk my ear off, bro. Just be here and go to work, bro. Show me through your actions, right? Back. Throw me, Show me through the practice film. Show me through the game film. Every time I turn that film on, I, I, I shouldn't have those, oh, does he, should I be questioning his energy? Should I be questioning his attitude? Should I be questioning his commitment? Right? Like, you don't want to have that. I just want to be like, damn, it doesn't matter what day it is. It doesn't matter what happened to this man today. Maybe he failed the test or maybe he broke up with his girlfriend or maybe something happened with his family. It doesn't matter. Right? Because when he shows up, he's the same football player. He's the same dude. Right? Right? And it's not easy. It's not easy. Right. We're all human. Um, But I know that a lot of football players, especially like myself, like I took those football, the moments when I was on the field, it was like my sanctuary, bro. Like didn't nothing matter to me besides football. It didn't matter what happened during that day. Didn't matter. Could have been something bad. But when I stepped foot on that field, it was as if like everything just left my mind. Right. Right. Two hours of like, wow, bro. Like, I'm doing what I love to do, yeah. you know, and I just feel like when players have that and those, those, those are what we would consider football guys, right? Yeah. Like John always says, I, I want football guys, right? Those football guys are guys who love football, yeah. right? You, I don't have to motivate you, bro. I don't have to, you know, tell you how, you know, like, are you hungry, bro? Like, do you want to win? You know what I mean? I don't have to talk to you about that because I already know that, you know what I mean? It's just a matter of helping you get prepared. It's just a matter of helping you, be in positions to be successful. You know what I mean? That's what I want to do. And that's what makes coaching fun is when you have those type of guys that, that, that love football, but you have those guys that just want to win. They want, they want to buy in. It's like, like you were saying when coach Dub was at Tulane, like all these guys are like, coach, tell me what to do and I'm going to do it. That's what you want, you know? And that's what makes football fun. That's all oh my gosh, bro. I'm already getting juice right now. Just thinking about it. Hell yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Like it just give me like a group of guys that just want to go out there and just play. They want to play all out and just smack somebody. You feel me? They just want to buy the program and just make plays, bro. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love that, bro. I lo- I'll sign up for that every day. Every you day. Know, that every day, twice on Sunday. You feel me? <laughs> I feel you, bro. Hey, man, I feel you, B. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, kind of to that point, you know, it's just like when I was coaching last year, it was just like I felt like, you know, and like I was just doing, we're doing the cones drills. I'm beating up these kids with these cones. Cause I'm beating you up, and like you're, this is gonna come like this in the game. Like it's fight up, fight through it. And then, and then, and then, my coach is like, you know, what's going on with you guys? It's like you guys are being beaten by cones because you don't want it badly enough. Right. Some of right. these kids were probably your size, Marquez, and True. they're getting beaten by me on the line with cones, just with right. cones, little pat, little paddock, you know, just jamming them at the line, you know. And so, to your point, I totally agree. Like, I want, I want the guys, like, like kind of like us. We will never question anything. We will question some things just because we right. want to make sure we understand. And you know, there is there isn't a better way to do it. But we, when we're we, you don't have to ask me twice. You don't have to ask you twice. We will get out there. And obviously, for me, because Coach Dub was my first coach ever. I didn't have any coach prior to that. That was pretty much the eternal thing I take away from that. You know, being able to be coachable and being able to work with the best. And like you said, we're very fortunate to be at Santa City. So, you know, absolutely. I mean, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, anything, anything closing, bro? For sure. Hey, man. Um. I just want to, you know, give a shout out to you, bro. Special thanks to you uh, for having me on here on this platform. Um, you know, it's always a, a good time to catch up with a former teammate and, yes, you know, former Jag, uh, reminisce on some good times. Uh, <laughs> talk some <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I just I just want to, you know, say thank you, man. I appreciate you reaching out and, and having me on here. And uh, I had a blast, bro. I don't know how long we've been on here, but, uh, it, you know, time flies by when you're having a good time, as they say. Hell yeah. No, we're going to do it again too, bro. I mean, hopefully we can get Dub on next week. And, you know, I mean, I'll keep you posted on that, but, you know, I appreciate uh, you being on. I would love to. I would love to because uh, Dub is Dub is my dude, man. And, yeah. I, you know, I, I love for him and uh, he's doing big things. And, uh, you know, I know his kids are doing big things too. I know his son is coaching. And yes, he is. I believe his daughter is, is playing soccer. So yes, at she the is. College, 
you know, big, big shout out to them. But uh, I'm, I know that Dub had a big part to do with that, too. I know <laughs> Dub was getting them, you know, he was getting them right. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to that. That'd be fun. And uh, yeah, man, just uh, just just super happy to be here, bro. 100%. No, man. Glad to have you on, man. Great reconnecting, brother. You know, man, we'll do it again. So, yeah, bro. Absolutely. I'm, absolutely. All right, baby. I'll, I'll talk All right, brother. Stay All up, right. man. Peace. Yeah, so, you too. <laughs>